Now on BBC Radio Wales, it's time for celebration, and our service this week is led by David Davis. Good morning and welcome to Ebenezer Gospel Hall, Carmarthen. We have some old favourites and some more recent hymns to sing today, but one thing is sure, the message of the old and the new is still the same. Our first hymn tells us of a merciful God. Great is the gospel of our glorious God when mercy met the anger of God's rod. A penalty was paid, a pardon bought, and sinner lost at last to him were brought. Now I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Ewan. My God and Saviour, thank you once again that we can come and hear the message of good news that Jesus saves. We thank you that you are the way, the truth and the life, and that whoever believes and trusts in you will be saved. We ask for help of the Holy Spirit in whoever may take part today. And finally, we ask that your Son may be glorified in all that is said. We ask these things in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to a second hymn, Christ triumphant, ever reigneth, Saviour, Master, King, Lord of heaven, our lives sustaining, hear us as we sing.
Our scripture reading this morning is by one of the youngest members, Joel Rees. Thank you, Joel. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Let's turn to a third hymn before we hear from Ian Rees. The first verse of this hymn begins with the words, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. call upon Ian Rees to preach to us what God has laid on his heart. Ian. Should you visit Botswana, a country in southern Africa, you would find a land belonging to a wonderful people and fabulous wildlife. Having lived there for a number of years as missionaries, our family was accustomed to seeing elephant, giraffe, zebra and antelope of various kinds not only in the game reserves, but often on the sides of the deserted roads as we travelled. These animals could be very dangerous. I remember early one morning passing by a large lorry that had overturned in a ditch at the side of the road. Lying on its side in front of the lorry, and very dead, 
was a huge elephant. Neither the lorry nor the elephant survived the collision, though we hoped the driver of the lorry, by now empty, had survived. The greatest danger to drivers on the roads, however, wasn't the wildlife but domestic animals, chickens, goats, donkeys and dogs. These were left to roam at will and often caused road accidents. Dogs would come out from villages, running alongside vehicles, barking as they went. Goats would run as soon as they saw or heard a vehicle approaching, sometimes running away from the road, but sometimes running into it. Donkeys, however, slow-moving and stubborn, would seldom move, sometimes standing firmly in the middle of the road as vehicles approached and remaining there as the vehicle passed by. A popular story in Botswana tries to explain why the dog, the donkey and the goat behave as they do. It is worth repeating. One hot, dry day in Botswana, a dog, a donkey and a goat decided to go away for the day together to a local reservoir for a swim. The three friends duly turned up at the bus stop in the village and waited for the bus to come. The donkey, a plodding but very careful animal, had the exact fare in his pocket. Shall we say, for our present purposes, a one-pound coin. When the bus pulled up, he got onto it, paid the driver the fare, took his ticket and went to the back of the bus. His friend the dog was not so careful and only had on him a five-pound note. He gave this to the driver, but as this was the first stop on the route, the driver had insufficient change. Take your ticket and sit down, he said to the dog. I'll give you your change when you get off. So the dog took his ticket and went to sit with his friend at the back of the bus. Meanwhile, the goat, who was a sly, crafty creature, had got onto the bus, but having no money and not intending to pay, crawled underneath the seats to the back of the bus while the driver's attention was taken up by the dog. When they eventually reached the reservoir, the donkey rose from his seat, made his slow way to the front of the bus, got off and stood under the shade of a mapani tree waiting for his friends. The dog followed him, but stopped by the driver and asked for his change. The driver refused to give it to him. You have been a most disruptive passenger, he said. You have barked and scratched all the way and disturbed me and my passengers. Get off. And with that, the dog was pushed off the bus. Meanwhile, the goat made his slow and steady way on his belly underneath the seats until he reached the door and then, as quick as a flash, he was gone. Now, say the Botswana, when a vehicle passes along the road, the donkey refuses to move, saying, I've paid my money and you can't push me around. When the dog sees a vehicle coming, he rushes out from the village, barking alongside the vehicle and saying, Where's my change? Where's my change? The goat, however, sees a vehicle coming and runs. Why? because he is guilty. The story may be a bit simple for us in our modern sophisticated days, but it illustrates, as many fables do, a profound truth that is of worldwide experience, and that is simply this, that guilt separates us from one another. Often when we upset other people, either deliberately or unwittingly, when we offend, we feel embarrassed even guilty, and is then often easier to avoid those we have upset. People cross the street to avoid one another. Neighbours shut doors and draw curtains. Friends no longer phone one another. School children see teachers approaching and disappear. Criminals hide from the police. This feeling of guilt separates us from the one we have offended 
It's as old as the hills. Why, it even began in the Garden of Eden. God had told Adam not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or he would die. Eve, Adam's wife, was tempted to eat of the tree, took it, ate it, and gave it to her husband to eat. Once they had eaten, they both knew they had done wrong and felt ashamed. Then God came down into the garden to walk and talk with Adam and Eve. But instead of finding them eager and waiting to meet him and talk to him, they weren't there. Where are you, called God? I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid, and I hid myself, said Adam. God asked Adam the obvious question. Have you eaten of the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? God knew that guilt, sin, had driven Adam and Eve away from him. The prophet Isaiah was sent by God to tell his people, Your sins and iniquities have separated you from your God. I note that it's the guilty that usually run away. The goat runs from the bus driver in the story from Botswana. The bus driver doesn't run from the goat. God didn't refuse to meet or talk with Adam and Eve that day in Eden. God wasn't guilty of any wrongdoing, any sin. Adam and Eve were. They hid from him. And millions of people are doing the same thing today. They avoid God. They do not want God. They will not seek or worship God. I am not now talking of those who don't believe he exists. I'm speaking about those, perhaps even us, who do believe in him, but avoid him. Often because we feel bad about something. We feel guilty. Sometimes we don't even want to pray to him. Until things go wrong, that is. Of course, the best way to resolve the problem of guilt is to take it away. An admission of wrong and an apology to those we have offended is often all that is needed. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I didn't mean to upset you. I was wrong in what I said or did. Such an attitude can often restore a friendship. That's what God wants from us too. He wants us, as the Bible puts it, to show repentance towards God. If we come to him in prayer instead of hiding from him and confess our wrongdoings, our sins, and express a willingness not to do them anymore, he will forgive. But in the story of the goat in Botswana, I expect it wasn't just guilt that drove him away from the bus. It was fear of punishment too. But God sent his only begotten son, who men down here call Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in order for our sins to be forgiven and our guilt to be taken away. Jesus Christ willingly suffered, the just in the place of the unjust, to bring us to God. He himself was and is sinless. But God on the cross of Calvary punished his son for our sin. Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. God made him to be sin, although he knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What God requires from us today is repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we hiding from God? Is guilt driving us away from him? Let's come to him today. Confess our sins, turn away from them, trust in the death of his Son upon the cross as a substitute for sinners, and then we can rejoice in a lifetime of fellowship with God and his people knowing that our guilt has been taken away and our punishment borne by another. Nothing can now separate us 
from our God. And now our next hymn, an old favourite to a different tune. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the King of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. come to the end of our service today, I call on John Lloyd to close in prayer. We give thee thanks, O God, for the songs of praise, worship and thanksgiving that have been raised to thee today. We thank thee for the good news of the gospel, revealing thy grace, love and mercy in the sending of thy Son to be our Saviour. We thank thee that through the death of thy Son we can be reconciled to thee and experience the blessing of sins forgiven and peace with thee. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
This morning's celebration service came from Ebenezer Gospel Hall, Carmarthen, and was led by David Davis. The preacher was Ian Rees, and the accompanist was Peter Jackson.